This is the T and Ready practice test for Integrated Math 2, question number 20. Well, at least it is now, so in 2019 it's question number 20. If you're watching a newer version that I've updated at some point, I may just tell you it's a different number now, but whatever. Consider the equation 3 times the quantity x minus 5 squared plus 6 equals 54. What is the greatest value of x that makes this equation true? Now, they say greatest value of x because of the nature of the fact that it's, it's quadratic, so you'll probably have two answers, right? But the first thing that I want to do is sort of solve it as I would any other problem. I'm going to look at, like if I had 3x squared without the minus 5 part, plus 6 equals 54, and I was trying to solve for x, the first thing I do is get the, rid of the furthest thing away from the x. So this 3 is right next to this x, and so is the squared, but the plus 6 is kind of out on its own little island. So I'm going to eliminate that first. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3 times the quantity x minus 5 squared plus 6 equals 54. It's always a good idea just to kind of clean anything you can up. Minus 6, because in order to get rid of addition, I need to use subtraction. Those cancel. 54 minus 6 is 48. Now, in my other problem, I'd have 3x squared, and the, the easiest thing to do would get be get rid of times 3, and that's what I'm going to do. This 3 is multiplied by this term, but I'm trying to get this by itself. The easiest move and the lowest level thing to worry about is to get rid of the times 3. So I'm going to divide this whole thing by 3. So I end up with x minus 5 squared is equal to 48 divided by 3 is 16. I have a few options here. Um, I could go ahead and do this as x minus 5 times x minus 5 and get x squared minus 10x plus 25 and then set that equal to 16, subtract this over here and get um, plus 9 and then factor these two out and this isn't actually a really super easy factoring. Um, I would just do this. I'm trying to get negative 10 plus 9. The thing about it um, is that if this is a positive and this is a negative, it means I'm trying to get two numbers I can add together to get 9 and then uh, or sort of multiply together and get 9 and they have to add together to get negative 10. So the only choices that I have here are negative 9 and negative 1 because, hey, hey, Negative 9 times negative 1 is positive 9, and negative 9 minus 1 is negative 10. So those are my choices. So my factors are going to be x minus 9 times x minus 1. From here, I can just solve, which I'll do in a different color, just to sort of show you that I'm here now. x minus 9 is equal to 0, so just use plus 9 x is equal to 9. That's one of my choices. For the other one, x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1. So those are my two choices. I have both of those available to me. And the larger one here is, of course, the 9. So I'm going to put 9 right there. Now, what, what else could I have done? There's a, a bunch of choices that I could use. Um, I could have made this x minus 5 and subtract this. So let me erase this out a little bit. Another option I could have gone with is I could have subtracted 16 from both sides and then end up with x. And I don't know why that minus keeps popping out, but that's really annoying me. x minus 5 squared minus 16. That's the ugliest 16 ever, isn't it? Equals 0. And then I could graph this and look visually to see where the intersection or where the zeros are that's another option and still another option which if you need to see what the graphing part looks like I do a similar one on 18 and 19 uh, from the 2019 test so choose your adventure but basically just graph it and look to see where it crosses the x-axis another option that I have that a lot of people don't think about is the fact that I can still continue eliminating things furthest from x by getting rid of the square. I can, oh, I lost something. Hold on. There we go. Um, I can just take a square root here. 
this is going to give me 4. And then this actually gives me... Now what you'll most likely see is x minus 5 squared gives you plus or minus 4, but what it should really end up looking like when you graph it is you get negative x minus 5 equals 4 and positive x minus 5 is equal to 4. That's really how it breaks out, but a lot of times we shortcut it and say, okay, it's just x minus 5 is plus or minus 4, and we solve. So let's solve these. x minus 5 is equal to 4. That's this one here. Add 5 to both sides and get 9. Da, da, da. The other one would be negative x minus 5 equals 4. And you have a couple options here. You can distribute this x if you want. You can divide both sides because this is a negative 1. And then you get x minus 5 is equal to negative 4. Add 5 to both sides. x is equal to 1. But it doesn't matter. Here's the 9. Use any of those methods you want. I'm just trying to give you as many choices as you can get. And uh, you could still complete the square, whatever you need to do to get to your final answer. Just make sure that you're providing an x value here.